Rex? What's Jim Rex? Would you believe a movie audience guide presented as a public service by this theater's management to help you select your motion picture entertainment? Well, that's what it is. And we urge you to learn these rating symbols and use them as a guide for you and your family. G means suggested for general audiences, all ages. M, suggested for mature audiences, parental discretion advised. R, restricted, persons under 16 not admitted unless accompanied by parent or adult guardian. X, persons under 16 will not be admitted. This seal in advertising indicates that the film was approved under the motion picture code of self-regulation. Welcome to the world of the not-too-distant future. Get going! Go! A brutal gang is reshaping the world into their own vision of hell. And only one man can stop them. Jean-Claude Van Damme is leading the battle between good and evil. Take them out as it's never been fought before. He's on a desperate mission to rescue a cyborg who holds the secret for saving the world. Why did you help me? I don't want to see you die. From the dust of destruction rises the warrior of a new age. Say goodbye, my friend. Jean-Claude Van Damme has become the first hero of the 21st century. Cyborg. Inside the house of seven corpses, is buried the memory of madness. <laughs> Paralyzed with fear, no. the no. visitors wait for the unknown. This way, please. From the shadows of the tomb, the dead are summoned to fulfill an ancient curse. The dead rise. And come to me. A curse no one can escape. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What awaits you in the house of seven corpses is more than a fear you can't explain. I feel it. I feel something's gonna happen. Terrible. A fate you can't prevent. You're insane. A death you can't escape. <laughs> there are eight graves, seven bodies, and one killer in the house of seven corpses. At the end of the last scream, death waits. The House of Seven Corpses holds a deadly secret. You must see it to believe it. Meet Youngblood and Ramel. They're a generation apart and united by a bond that's stronger than blood. They need each other to survive. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, Brian O'Dell, Youngblood, with music written and performed by war. Youngblood, rated R.
20 years after the bomb, the past becomes a dream, where cars are things that grow in trees, and comic books are real. Metropolis. That's lots of cars and all the clothes are white and all the people can fly. I'm not here to steal your food or feel your women. I have a show. Now, the miracle. Cereal! <laughs> big kiss off. An ex-cop tangles with an ex-hooker. They are into a murder. This cool cat calls the shots. The bullet machine. He's a clean cut killer who fights dirty. He can hack it. She's a hired gun who's knocking off his clients. She knows all the ways to skin a cat. Those prostitutes hate men. Why not her? And for enough money, she'd do anything. She's taking on the bullet machine. I'm Harry Clegg. Sent from heaven to protect you. He's buying a lot of punishment. Gentlemen, he's all yours. There's plenty of feedback in the bullet machine. She said to tell you she's back in training. Can anyone else help you? I've got a very nervous hand. Talk. He follows every lead. He gets every message. You are very good. 
very stupid and very persistent. And shortly you will be very dead. It's all in a day's work. He can take it. I've got things to do. Your time has come. Cross his palm, he'll do anything. Double cross it. He doesn't mess around. Who's behind the blonde behind the gun? Somebody has triggered the bullet machine. Billy D. Williams, better than ever. Bitter baby, I'm not bitter. I was bitter 350 years ago. I'm violent, you hear me? God damn it, violent! He's a one-man master squad. Deville Martin. All right, get down on the floor right now. You are living in a tormented cultural wasteland. You are a black man. Hmm. Hey, black lady! <laughs> Listen, mister, keep your hands off of me unless you want five fingerprints across your face. Now, we know Billy Joe needs guns, and we know he needs them quick. This is called an Uzi. That's a fully automatic submachine gun, fires 650 rounds per minute. How about a little Russian roulette? Freeze, you two! Billy D. Williams, ah. taking on every badass cop in town. <laughs> What is this shit? What's happening? Martial law fever setting in. You know what that means? Sure. You did anything black that moves. Busting, blasting, <laughs> blowing the man off the street. <laughs> Billy D. Williams. Blaster! Blast. It'll wipe you out. Solid man.
God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, baby. Get out! Get out! It's not a knife, it's a spoon. I could kill you with this spoon. Who are you? Insofar as one is able to identify myself, I bear the name Alexander Levine. This is from the welfare department. No, Mr. Mishkin, I don't come from the welfare. I come from God. He's a Meshuganah. I am an angel, and I was sent here to help you. That's the way a Jewish angel talks. Are you circumcised? Why don't you call the police? I can't. He's using the telephone. You're not an angel. I'm an angel, and you better believe it, because I'm the only one you're ever going to get. All right. Make a miracle. What kind of miracle? Any kind of miracle. Walk into the stove, make a flood of seltzer, fill the icebox full of halavar, something, anything. Go ahead. No. First you believe in me, then I'll pass a miracle. It's enough that I believe you're Jewish. Zero Mastel, Harry Belafonte, the Angel Levine. You told me you were an angel? I believe you're an angel. Come on down. How the hell did they expect me to make you believe in me as an angel when I couldn't make anybody believe in me as a man? Have you come to take me away? No come to give you life. No, you saw it. Right here, in this room. The miracle. I saw nothing. I'm an angel. I'm an angel and you won't believe me. I don't need angels in my life. It's too late for angels. What am I, a dog? An animal in the streets? First I should be tortured and then I should believe? It's too late. Too late! The Angel Levine. If he's an angel... Imagine what God is like. <laughs> takes place in I drink your blood and I eat your skin. 
can you take it? If you have a strong constitution, we challenge you to test it and sit through. I drink your blood and I eat your skin. It's the time to be young. It's the time to be wild. It's the time to be in love. Teenage Graffiti, the sign of the times. What are you doing with yourself now that you've graduated? does it like the teenagers do it. And they do it all in Teenage Graffiti. This is beauty. This is the beast. <laughs> Descend with them into a world of terror. what I'm celebrating tonight. I wonder why he hated you so much. I do the devil's work. <laughs> I change the faces that God intended. I cater to man's vanity and to his lust. God, look out! Girl you just brought in. What do you think happened to her? Yeah, she looks like somebody worked her over and tried to destroy her face. They succeeded. Ever since you started these operations, there has been something going on in your head, and it ain't medical. How would you like to have this face? What the hell for? The two and a half million dollars be sufficient incentive. I want no trouble. Maybe any trouble. Look, I can teach you everything you need to know. I mean, her mannerisms. I got tape recordings of Heather's voice. She'll study photographs of the family. Anyway, and you're only going to have to impersonate her twice. Heather! Hello, cousin Margaret. Who'd have thought you'd come back looking so beautiful? Don't come back at all. And you have yet to introduce me to your little friend. All right, Heather, this is Jane. Jane is well, Heather. Jane what? Uh, Doe. Jane Doe. Has it ever occurred to you what fun we could have with my daddy? <laughs> Don't you, Philip? I didn't ask him how he was going to do it. I told him it's going to be fast and it's going to be painless. Cutting edge of terror in Scalpel. Don't let Dr. Reynolds get his hands on you. Are you afraid of the dark? Of being alone? Are you willing to explore the unknown, holding back your fear, allowing your natural curiosity to guide you? 
despite warnings. Disappearances. Premonitions. And the horrible feeling you have always been watched. Someone there? But what if this is a nightmare? And you are its prisoner. <laughs> Silent scream when the terror is so sudden that there's no time to scream. Mercenary, soldier of fortune. He's more than a man. He's a walking death machine. Candy O'Perrin, sexy undercover cop. Her deadliest weapon is her body. Mike O'Malley, Hollywood's top stuntman. What do you want us to do? Fight our champions. Only this time, the action's for real. And Rick Chan. Black belt, primed for action with one blow, the death blow. Only two words describe the power and fury of this unstoppable team, raw force. Join them as their carefree vacation cruise turns into hell on the high seas. What was that? Final port of call, Warrior Island. Uncharted and unexplored. We should not be here. Burial grounds for martial arts masters from the past. Their resting place is defiled. They rise from the dead to avenge their honor. Who will win? The living or the living dead? Join John Dresden, Gillian Kesner, Jeff Benny, Raymond King, and Cameron Mitchell. As they band together with the incredible power of raw force, untamed and unleashed to kill. In 1836, he moved like a shadow through the mountains and forests of southern Canada and Montana. Only one white man had ever seen him. His own people, the Blackfoot, were in awe of him. They said he could see like an eagle, smell like a wolf, and run like an antelope. As a warrior, he was terrifying. When his people were dying of smallpox, he stepped out of the shadows and asked the white man for medicine. He got treachery and bullets instead. In revenge, he kidnapped a white girl and boy and in an incredible journey, outmaneuvered a group of mountain men through the high country for almost a year. His name was Winter Hall. And his story was only told around Blackfoot campfires until now. Charles B. Pierce brings it to the wide screen as one of the epic adventure films of all time. Winter Hall, rated PG. Conduct unbecoming, an unspeakable crime among officers and ladies. <laughs> Who or what did it? I am possessed by him. When he takes over, I am driven. I am helpless. Charge! Marjorie, 
someone attacked you. You must tell us who it was. That man was Captain Scarlet. <laughs> that can't be. He's, he's there. He was killed. It doesn't matter who it was, which man it was. They are all the same. Stupid, cruel men who treat women and pigs alike. Colonel, don't you know what sort of regiment you've bred? No officer in this regiment is capable of what you suggest. Came out of the dark. I tried to get away, but I fell. He saw it. He laughed as he cut me. I was crawling, trying to get away. He ran around me. Cut me again. All the time. He was saying. Oh, no. He was saying. You were saying what? Conduct Unbecoming. Starring Michael York, Richard Attenborough, Trevor Howard, Stacy Keach, Christopher Plummer, Susanna York, in the unspeakable crime they call Conduct Unbecoming. All right, there's a take. Nashville girl, at 16, Jamie grabbed her guitar, ran away from home, thinking all you need's a good voice and talent. Nashville taught her different, the story of her climb to the top and the price she pays to get there. I'm going to Nashville. How old are you? I'm 19. Sure, and I'm 120. So, what's in Nashville? Did you see that guitar? She's going to be the next Tanya Tucker, ain't she? I don't know about you. No, get yeah. me out! You gotta let me out! Hard three, asshole! What the f What the hell's going on? Yes, sir. She don't look 18 to me. Well, we had a little party, are we? Huh? A is all the little things you do. Caring for all the world to see. D is devotion between you and me. There are only two things I'm sure of. I can't go home again. And more than anything, I want to make it in this town. How old are you? I'll be 17 next week. Oh my God. Get out of bed, get dressed, and get out of here. Now hurry up. Jesus Christ, if anybody knows that I screwed a 16-year-old... Now you're gonna work for me and you're gonna f*** me until I tell you you're finished. I wanna become what the public thinks I am! You mean you want your virginity back? Melody Mason. Underage in the undergrowth of the country music jungle, she reached the top, but she paid the price with her body. To make it in the music business, she had to make it with the music business. Roger Davis, Jesse White, and Johnny Rodriguez. Nashville Girl. They called him Elegant John, and he was one heck of a trucker. Like all truckers, he had a dream. I worked all my life. I've driven all across the country. All I want to do is make one last run. One last 
perfect run carrying load all the way across country. And elegant John was going to make that dream come true, even if it meant breaking through the Great Smoky Roadblock in a stolen truck filled with ladies of dubious background and doubtful reputation. Elegant John set out on the wildest cross-country trailer truck chase in the history of the American highway. Two more states and we are home free. Sometimes there was a little detour. My God! But there's more than one way to skin a possum. Leave me alone now. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm married. Ain't nobody that married. If you know what I mean. The Great Smoky Roadblock stars Henry Fonda. Back, cowboy. You get in my way again, I'll kill you. You hear me? Eileen Brennan. You will never take us alive. The smoking marijuana would make you crazy. John Viner as crazy Bobby Appers. Dub Taylor. And Dana House as Celeste Lay. Fasten your seatbelts, turn on that CV, and get ready for the death-defying ride of a lifetime. Get ready for the ride that would forever abolish the Great Smoky Roadblock. It's the fanciest trucking you've ever seen. Isn't she precious? Isn't she cute? What do you want to be when you grow up? When I grow up, I want to work in a toy shop. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to show you scenes of an upcoming feature presentation. Its impact is so powerful and subject matter so different that we chose the unconventional way to make this presentation. Be prepared to handle shattering situations and learn what fear means to some. Why can't you be reasonable? Reef! How many times have I told you I can't even stand to look at your face? Mommy and Daddy don't like me. That's why I like toys. They make me happy. And Jamie met Charlie. Oh, uh, who do I see about a job? You're hired. And they work together in a toy store. And then... With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. They're no damn good. Take my word for it, Jamie, they'll hurt you. They'll hurt you! Oh, Charlie, I can't. Is that why you married me? Even in this age of permissiveness, toys are not for children will shock you, make you wonder where good ends and bad begins, whether or not there really is a difference between the two. Only you'll be in your toy balloon world, oh, no one can have you. Toys are not for children, is. Toys are not for children. An experience you will not forget. This is Dublin. This is my cousin Quaxer. He's a man with very special interests. Some men love food, not Quaxer. Some men love liquor, not Quaxer. My cousin, Quaxer Fortune, has a passion for... Well, let's just say he picks up where others leave off. Fresh manure! Fresh dumb! Excuse me, 
Hey, do you really sell that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's my job. This is all about Quaxer and what he did to Dublin. Quaxer. Quaxer. Where's Quaxer? That's Quaxer. That's Quaxer. Quaxer, you are. No, I got something on my mind and I want to talk to you. Now I listen. I have nothing to, to say to you, Quaxer. Well, just listen to me. Oh, it was foolish in the first place, the whole thing. Quaxer, please, I didn't. I. I'm sorry. How do you think of me? Quaxer Fortune found true beauty all over Dublin in small, neat piles.
Water him. Ah! Helen, I'm afraid. She's a bishop then? A bishop with teeth. <laughs> I drink to the three of us. And I drink to our right to choose. Are you coming? Yes! Yeah. Long before you were born, Claudia, your father and I... Don't you dare talk about him, you who killed him. Heron, will you not challenge this man who murdered my father? I thought you searched for freedom. But you are slaves. Slaves! If God saves the world, it won't be for the sake of kings and churches. Perhaps it will be for the sake of two people loving each other. I love you, Aaron. I love you, Claudia. Before your funeral and your coffin lid is closed, before you are buried and your flesh turns cold, before you are covered with the last shovel full of dirt, be sure you are really dead. <laughs> Mortuary. Hold it right there, Mister. Angie Dickinson, his big bad mama. Paradise, Texas, 1932. You're a disgrace. Oh, you drinking and gambling, kidnapping my innocent daughters and corrupting them. God, a mother's still got some rights in this country. Hey, you can't do that. The hell I can't. I'm defending my little girl's honor. <laughs> We're gonna have everything we ever wanted. <laughs> Like it or not, you're in the bank robbing business and you can't back out now. Who says I want to? All right, now just empty your pockets and take off your jewels and we'll stay friends. Come on, move it! I'm proud of my girls. Angie Dickinson. William Shatner. Tom Skerritt. Big Bad Mama. We made it, Mama! We made it! Yeah, baby. We made it good. centuries, the Society of the Black Dragon has sanctioned an ancient rite of combat known as the Kumite, open only to the world's most lethal warriors. It has never been won by a Westerner. 
You are not Japanese. I can do it. Now, for the first time, the true story of America's <laughs> super agent, Frank Dukes, can be revealed. Uncle Sam can't afford to let you get hurt. I'm going to Hong Kong. Frank is going to fight in the Kumite, and we're here to stop him. An awesome human weapon. There's me just looking at it. Who infiltrates the Chinese underworld. I did not come this far to stop now. Thank you. To enter a forbidden competition. Couldn't you just get me in? Strict rules. No press. You're telling me you never break rules? Where every fighting style, every worthy opponent, every deadly technique, I... clash in savage combat. Time to separate the men from the boys. I... And only one will triumph. Now I break you. I... International martial arts sensation Jean Claude Van Damme in Blood Sport. The true story of the ultimate champion. Randy Rawlings is a born winner, and she's got an Olympic gold medal to prove it. But now, she's about to face a tougher challenge than the fastest runners in the world. The boys' basketball team of Granger High. They didn't know the difference between a jump shot and a layup until they met a winner. Well, boys, I see you met your coach. He, uh, he hasn't come out yet. Well, yes, he has. Except he's a she. Woman coach? <laughs> They'll laugh us out of the league. Crown International Pictures presents Coach. <laughs> Finding out that I'm not exactly what you expected, but I am. <laughs> yes. We practice at night, Miss Rawlings. Late at night. <laughs> I am here to teach you how to play basketball. Now, if you have something else on your mind, everybody to the showers. Now! Now, I'll be out on the court every day for anybody who wants to practice. Everyone will take a cold shower before practice if they can't control their irresistible urges. Coach, I... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I should Something not. I can do for you? Yeah. Uh, I know they've been giving you a bad time, but if you could give them a little time. You know, we're really not that bad, Coach. I know. I think you can beat any team in the league. Randy Rawlings is completely into her work, and she's not going to stop until she turns a bunch of losers into a team of champions. Kiss the coach. I kiss the coach. You are incorrigible. But I'm queen. A team. A team of panty ways. Team. She's more to be pitied than censored. Look, I'm not going to take this anymore. We're going to win the game, and we're going to win the conference championship, and it's going to be because of Randy Rawlings. <laughs> The coach introduces her team to the sweet taste of victory. Winning is the greatest turn on of all. For the coach. At last, a warm, sensitive, touching story about the close personal relationship between 15 girls and their bus driver. The respect of a farmer for his chicken. Easy there, Turkey. Don't, don't look, Turkey. The love of a people for their government. Two million dollars, five dollar quarter. It's the cheerleaders' wild weekend. You can take them away for a weekend, but then just try to let them go. Who would have thought? It could be so much fun. All right, now rally, rally, rally! Go! 
Charlie Lucent. Out on the runway and into your heart. <laughs> some of you out there who feel that 15 naked cheerleaders are not all that exciting. Well, ho, ho on you. Cheerleaders Wild Weekend will prove you wrong. Jason Williams, star of Flesh Gordon, Crinda Bell, star of Alice in Wonderland, and the girls from Pierce, Holt, and Darwell High in Cheerleaders Wild Weekend. It'll grab you by the pom poms. For 15 years, Sam Varner stalked the Indian. Tonight, the Indian stalks him. Gregory Peck, Eva Marie Saint in The Stalking Moon. Apaches? Uh, How many? Just one. But there were three men. They were all armed. One set of tracks and a buffalo rifle. Salvahi. Last I heard of Salvahi, he was cleared down the window rock. What the hell's he doing up here again? He came for his son. He'll come back for his son. They put a thousand miles between themselves and the Apache. But it wasn't enough. Relentlessly, as the moon, he stalks them. Now listen at the fort, I hear from the Indians about the boy. You know what he is, this boy? Yeah. Well, I figure maybe you don't know. So I ride Hennessy. Then I ride Silverton. Silverton, they're all dead, too. I come tell you. He's on his way. Tonight, when the stalking moon is high, he will find them. <laughs> You won't hear him. I'll hear him. It doesn't happen that way. He just comes. to the stars. They come from you, but belong only to themselves. You all seem like such good friends. We are. We performed burn surgery together. We drunk truth serum together. We told each other all the things about ourselves. So it creates a bond between people. And though you may give them your kingdom, their thoughts are their own. For it is to them that you bequeath the future. The future that you cannot visit. 
I love you both. Ah, oh, she's just a kid. No, really? no, no. There's so few people we can trust. Careful. Terrific. I trust you. I you trust, trust you. you. I trust you. We all trust <laughs> each other. <laughs> when last summer began, they were children. When it ended, they were something else. Today's child dies. Tomorrow's man is born. Frank Perry, creator of David and Lisa, has once again discovered a cast of young talents and once again he has made an unforgettable motion picture based on the provocative novel by Evan Hunter. It is called Last Summer. This is Bruce Brown. A few years ago, we made a film on surfing called The Endless Summer. We've made a new film about another great sport, motorcycling. You'll see some familiar faces and meet some new ones, like Malcolm Smith, the king of the Sunday riders, and Mert Lowell, a professional racer whose world is fast and sometimes violent. Whether it's the spectacle of professional racing or the joy of a ride in the open country, we found the sport of motorcycling something very special. Forgotten memories of childhood lead into a fantastic realm. Was it a wolf or a man you killed? When I killed it, it was a wolf. It turned into a man. Here, dreams become reality, and our darkest fantasies come true. The worst kind of wolves are hairy on the inside, and when they bite you, they drag you with them to hell. She ran away! No! 
They say the Prince of Darkness is a gentleman. Gentlemen always keep their promises. What have you done with my granddaughter? Nothing. She didn't want. <laughs> The Company of Wolves, where fairy tales end and nightmares begin. The Company of Wolves. There comes a time in every girl's life when she knows she's not a little girl anymore. Inga, at 16, at her coming of age, learns everything there is to know about love. I'd like to be alone, like you, to do just what I want. And he turns to kiss you and you smile. And you feel you this new dress is really something. I wonder what Mother would say if she saw you like this. She probably wouldn't like it. There comes a time when she has new interests, a new awareness in her mind, a new feeling in her body. What smells so good? Like it? It's nothing dangerous. You would like it. It's very relaxing, you know. This is my sister Inga. You know, Bjorn, he's a painter. Where's Kasten? I don't know. Kasten? Bjorn will be a very good influence on you. You know, he smokes, he drinks, oh, and he even... Uh... There comes a time in every girl's life when she knows she has so much to give. You have a great thing going, playing naive and innocent, but really you're a little slut. That's not true. Excuse me, what do you call it? Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, I feel like a child. There comes a time in every girl's life when waiting and wanting aren't enough. I don't What do you mean? I don't believe you're for real. What, like this? Did you wear it like that? Of course. Did everybody look at you? There comes a time in every girl's life when she can't escape growing up. There comes a time in Inga's life when she can't escape being loved. States of love was a night that you'll never forget. Christina Lindbergh, the girl with them. You've seen her in Playboy, you've seen her in Penthouse. Now starring in Made in Sweden. In an unforgettable weekend in Stockholm, you'll see all of her. There comes a time in Inga's life when she becomes a woman. Made in Sweden. 20th Century Fox presents Making It, the story of a red-blooded and slightly black-hearted teenager. Phil Fuller knows what he wants and goes after her. And her. And her. But don't judge it until the last frame of the film. Making it rated R. A boy with a mission. A mission that can mean the difference between life and death for his pet cougar and all of his other animal friends. Run, Jason, run! Trap on Cougar Mountain. A courageous boy in a determined fight to outwit anyone who threatens his beloved wildlife. I miss you, boy. But you gotta understand. You can't come back to the ranch anymore. Dad will kill you if you do. Willing to risk anything, even his own life, so they can survive. Trap on Cougar Mountain. An exciting adventure story filled with surprises at every turn.
Trap on Cougar Mountain, a memorable motion picture from Sun International for the entire family. The Devil's Burn. An explosive film. Absolutely brilliant. ABC TV. Superbly, frighteningly effective. Time magazine. But of course I can prove nothing. This Mother Superior may be little more than a hysterical nun. Exactly. Mere conjecture. And what form does this incubus take? <laughs> the Devils is not a film for everyone. Vanessa Redgrave, Oliver Reed, in Ken Russell's film of The Devils. This picture has been rated X. No one under 17 admitted. Bronson. You've seen him like this, like this, and like this. But you've never seen Bronson like this, like this, or like this. Now, Charles Bronson. Oh, me. And Jill Ireland. Wowie, yourself. In From Noon Till Three. It's a love story, too good to be true. I hope that wasn't meant to be an insult. Charles Bronson is Graham Dorsey, the outlaw. Your name is now spoken in the same breath as Jesse James. He saw what he wanted. The first law of chivalry is to rescue ladies in distress. And took it. Oh! Oh! Jill Ireland is Amanda Starbuck, the lady. 
I'm not ashamed of anything I've done. Ooh. She knew what he needed. If you're so depraved, you'd inflict your desires on an unwilling body. Then proceed. And gave it. The whole world will remember the love they shared from noon till three. Love isn't something you measure that way. It's a romance. I think I'm in love with you. Me too. It's a western. Fill your hand, mister. I already did. It's a comedy. <laughs> it's a tragedy. I will let nothing spoil our legend. Nothing. It's full of suspense. And surprises. You don't want me to disrobe. It's an unusual movie starring an unusual Bronson. Oh, me. From noon till three. upon the future of mankind is so massive that it might be compared to the first nuclear explosion in Alamogordo, New Mexico in 1945. The discovery of DNA and RNA. Science has now isolated the chemical essence of life itself. The new branch of science is called genetic engineering. We now know how to determine the genetic code of any living cell, of any living tissue, of any living animal. We can now alter the reproductive process in animals. We can choose genes to predetermine sex, physical characteristics, intelligence, and much more. And science is now upon the threshold of the next and most awesome development. We can create a clone. The process called cloning has a parallel. By taking a small cutting from a plant and replanting the cutting, a new plant will grow. It will be identical in every way to the original. Now, take a single living cell from a single living man. Using biochemical genetic engineering, you can create an exact duplicate of that man. A living duplicate. Absolutely identical in every way. And he can be duplicated. And infinite copies. The technique is called cloning. The duplicated men are called the clones. Filmmakers International invites you to see a terrifying new motion picture, The Clones. It may seem like science fiction, but it is based in science fact. The Clones. Laboratory animals have already been cloned. Man is next. This film is that story. For they duplicated one man too many. They had to find him and kill him. The clones. Recent scientific symposium, United States Senator John Tunney of California voiced a warning about the dangers of genetic engineering. The cloning of frogs has already been successful. The technology for the cloning of mammals will be available within five years. Unless research is stopped, the technology for the cloning of human beings might be available within anything from 10 to 25 years. See the clones. Powerful. Exciting, terrifying, because now it is science fiction. Soon, it will be science fact. This gal, this gal, this gal, and this gal are one and the same person. She's a bright new comedy star, Sandy Duncan. Bad checks. 
Ah, uh, uh, well, you printed them. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy are also one and the same person. He's funny man Dean Jones. And these two deserve each other. Katie, you're not listening to me. We're going to be rich beyond our wildest dreams. Oh, honey, I always knew you'd make good. Even when Papa kept saying, don't marry that no good lazy, you know. In Walt Disney Productions' 24-carat comedy, Million Dollar Duck. <laughs> the fun begins when science professor Dooley inherits a radiated dropout duck named Charlie, who flunks every lab test in the book. Oh, come on, Dooley. Get that stupid duck out of here. A duck? Dooley gives Charlie to his son. But I want a puppy. I want a dumb old duck. Don't bother your father with that now. He has little enough on his mind as it is. Then discovers the dingy duck lays gold eggs. You're looking at a believer. <sighs> when the dog barks, the duck lays an egg. I don't know why. Well, that's not the way my mother explained it to me. I mean, this duck is, it's, uh, strange. Oh... Now, feathers fly when Katie spills the beans. Hurry, buddy. Yeah, Albert, you told me to. Oh, no, no, no. Evidently some kind of a new uh, a gangland code word. <laughs> no, no, just plain duck, you know. Quack, quack. <laughs> Jimmy wants his duck. Charlie! Dooley wants his million dollars. <laughs> Katie wants her happy home. Why, you hit my husband! Till death do us in. Fred wants his share. I'd like a gold license for my little ducky who lays gold eggs. Hooper oh, wants his evidence. Anything happen back there? No. Albert, he knows. We know you got a duck here somewhere. A duck? And internal revenuers want them all. Get out! 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 Never before has there been such a hilarious gold rush of motion picture entertainment for everyone. Fred! What are you trying to pull now, Dooley? Well, what do you think, Hooper? I'm waiting for a street car! It's a wild, improbable, funny story about a get-rich duck with Dean Jones, Sandy Duncan, Tony Roberts, Joe Flynn, James Gregory and Charlie in Walt Disney Productions' 24-carat comedy, Million Dollar Duck. Ah. The vacation kingdom of the world in Florida. Walt Disney World opens October 1971. Sir, I feel I have a fine team here. Now, sure, I speak for all my men. We appreciate this opportunity to fight for our country, sir. Very well said, Lieutenant. That's all, men. This is the story of a group of courageous men. To victory. Fighting a war they couldn't understand. It is part of our job here to win the hearts and minds of the people, sir. We will make them welcome. A war against an enemy they couldn't see. A war. They thought they couldn't lose. You know what happened to the French in this country? That's not going to happen to the U.S. Army. Ah! That's what it's like in this war. But it was a war that couldn't be won. This one's a sucker's tour. Going nowhere. Just round and round in circles. Bert Lancaster in Go Tell the Spartans. to get United States combat troops in here. Cowboy, give me a fire team. At least to here with a machine gun. Intelligence believes that more than 1,000 B.C. are being moved into the attack on Mukwa. They'll come over these walls like a forest fire. Kong moved in because they knew it was a weak point, sir. How long does it take for you to get your reinforcements in there? For three days, maybe. But we won't lose, because we're Americans. It's their war and it's their country. We've done all we can do here. 
It began as a routine mission and became a massacre. And they sent one last message. Go tell the Spartans. Of all the heroes, renegades, and dirty low-down thieves the West has produced, none can compare with... Compañero! Fate brought them together. You're going to witness the classical squashing of the head! Church! Greed made them inseparable. Don't take your eyes off the sweet. If you're nervous because you want to join us, then be my guest. And violence made them campaneros. Give me one single case where violence is absolutely necessary. Yours. No violence. No violence. How did you escape from there? It was Marcia. She saved me from a nail that pinned my flesh to the tree. How? <laughs> she ate off my hand. Campaneros, so unmatched, and yet they're matchless. <laughs> the Campaneros blow everything, including your mind. Are your parents encouraging you to get a college education? Let me kill him! Have we got a school for you? Forget Harvard. Forget Princeton. Learn to earn big bucks fast. Beef. The Spartans. Beef bucks. Come to Buster Burger University. Fall in over here. And see Hamburger, the motion picture. We're here to learn to run a Buster Burger franchise. Lots of bull in every fight. A lot of bull in every fight. But you'll get more than just an education at Buster Burger U. Are you crazy? You'll find a faculty that really cares about you. <laughs> On-the-job training will get you ready. Can I Buster help you? For the fast-paced world of fast food. <laughs> Buster Burger, America's favorite drive through restaurant. Hamburger, the motion picture. It's funny enough to eat. Remarkable, aren't they? So natural. So real. Seemingly alive. I'll let you in on a little secret. Some of them are alive. Zombies. Frozen in a theater of terror. People puppets. Acting on the cues of a madman. Out, Leslie. Let me move, breathe, move, walk, follow me. Nightmare in Wax. It started with an accident. <laughs> Cameron Mitchell as Vincent, once a man, now a monster. Anne Helm. You comfortable? Oh, very. Am I going to be in here for long? Only an eternity, my dear. Now look, honey. Don't try anything funny with that knife. I don't want to hurt you. Don't 
Scott Brady. Money? Observe the preparation of victims about to join Vincent's demonic legion of the walking dead. Thank you. Nightmare in Wax. Frightening. <laughs> Diabolical. Weird. Nightmare in Wax. In color. A Crown International release. This is the fortress, El Condor. It's guarded by the whole damn Mexican army. The odds of getting inside alive are insane. But for a billion in gold, and the general's woman, one professional killer, and one escaped convict, damn the odds. These are your Apaches. Did you ever see Apaches before? Nope. Well, you better shut up. Come on. Get up. Oh, no, not me. You just insulted his number one brain. You gotta fight him. That's what proves a man's a man. I'm not gonna fight this. Midget. But you can always turn and run. Fight your rule, you're gonna get yours. <laughs> Luke, why don't you admit you're scared? If you're man enough to penetrate the fortress El Condor, you've got to take a little. Oh, give me water, Lord have mercy. And give one hell of a lot. They're my Apaches. I'll run them any way I want to. We came here to take a fort. We got all we need right here. We got millions. Stupid. We can have it all. We outnumber your army better than 20 to 1. You're in here, and we're out there. With 100 of you as your army, you slaughter the soldiers in the arms of their women. Scale the walls of El Condor with steel spikes tied to your feet and use one damn sexy woman to challenge the entire Mexican army. Jim Brown and Lee Van Fleet take on everyone and each other. Let's just draw them. Riders coming! through the walls of El Condor or die trying. I spent six years in jail, and it was horrible. I was just breathing and taking up space. Oh, in the last two weeks, I've done more living than in all six years. And woman, look what we've done. I came down here to your studio to tell you that I'll forget you stole my song. If you start peeing me my royalty money, sir, I would definitely do something about them dog patch manners of yours. We got a hit record. I've been chased. I got shot, and I fell madly in love. Just because you're smarter than me, you don't have to go get stuck up, you know. Stuck up? <laughs> Look at me, you're the one stuck up. 
permanently. Well, it's because you're such a constant source of inspiration. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, well, listen, wait a second. I got something in my pocket I want to show you. Don't you ever get tired? Mm. I figured uh, 2,123 incidents of lovemaking I'm behind. Well, you ought to get caught up by morning. Never! Fonda and Susan St. James. Oh, hell, I'd do another six years just to live it over again. Outlaw Blues.